A few weeks ago, I posted a video about a Tesla supercharger extension cable, a cable that will allow non-Tesla electric vehicles to charge at Tesla superchargers and utilize the correct stall. One of the problems we're seeing now that Tesla has opened up its network to other electric vehicles is because of their charge port location, they can't charge from the correct stall and they need to charge from the stall next to the correct supercharger stall, essentially taking up two stalls to charge one vehicle. A to Z EV is going to be selling a supercharger extension cable, like the one on the wall here. This is a prototype that I based my first video on, and this is a very long prototype. It's 15 feet long. That's not the length of the cable that A to Z is going to be selling. They just use this as a prototype for testing. They're gonna be selling one that's only five feet long. And because of that, a lot of people in the comments of my first video said, hey, Tom, please convince them to sell this long cable. Five feet's not gonna be enough for me to reach my charge port. So what I did was made my own Tesla supercharger extension cable here that is five feet long. I'm not sure it's gonna work because the, well, I was gonna call it a cable, but the uh, PVC tubing that I used probably won't allow electrons to pass through it, but we'll find out soon. But that's not the point, the point is, Will five feet of extension cable be enough? So I'm gonna take this out to a Tesla supercharger now with my Ford F-150 Lightning, which has just about the worst situation. This giant long hood, the charge port is all the way back far by the driver's door, but I'm also gonna test some other electric vehicles just to make sure that five feet is enough. Now, A to Z EV has told me that five feet will be enough to allow just about any electric vehicle or any electric vehicle, not just about any electric vehicle, to park within the correct stall and charge. But we always like to make sure that what companies are telling us is the truth. I've found not all companies are entirely truthful when they talk about their products. So I made this mock-up extension cable here. I'm gonna head out to Tesla Superchargers. We'll see if it is long enough. Let's get into it. So I chose to use my F-150 Lightning as the first test because honestly, I think it is gonna be the most difficult. The Lightning is very wide and the charge port is all the way back here, far from the front of the vehicle. So let's see just how this short extension cable works. You also notice I did park within the stall. I cheated a little bit towards that side of the spot, but my wheels are inside the parking stall, so it's not like I'm encroaching upon the other parking stall, but I'm maybe about a foot over, not directly in the middle of this charging stall. Let's see how this works. So as you can see, the connector itself barely reaches to the edge of the front of my Lightning. I will plug in that end come over here now this cable isn't nearly as flexible this cable this PVC tubing isn't nearly as flexible as a cable would be but let's see if I can come over here how this will work it works so this pass is what I think is going to be the most difficult test and I didn't even have to drape it across the top I thought I might have to go across the top of the hood I don't have to you can see the imaginary electrons flowing through the PVC tubing and the lightning is charging. So, hey, uh, I guess five feet is enough for the lightning. We'll have to try a few more vehicles though before I'm completely convinced. This video was sponsored by Qmerit, North America's premier installer of electric vehicle charging equipment. After I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and have Qmerit install it. And if you follow that link, Qmerit will waive the $150 installation deposit. But in order to have the deposit waived, you must follow the link in the description of my videos. Okay, so now I'm at a Tesla supercharger with my 
2024 Chevrolet Equinox EV. It has the charge port here on the front left fender like the Lightning, but it's not quite as far back as the Lightning. It is pretty far back, but I believe that the Lightning reach, this is gonna reach, but we gotta try it out to make sure. Let's give it a shot. Yep, so the Chevy Equinox EV does reach, and if you notice, I really parked uh, right in the middle of this spot. I didn't even try to cheat towards the supercharger, and I left a lot of room in the front. I could actually pull up a little bit more and make this so that even with the five-foot cable, it's not kind of draped like this. It's uh, not as tight. It would be a little bit looser, so... Chevy Equinox EV will pass the five foot extension cable test. Okay, so next up, we're gonna try an Audi e-tron. Phil heard on Batteries Included podcast that I was looking for somebody in the area to have an e-tron. He drove an hour just to let me try this out on his car. So Phil, if it works, I'll charge your car, okay, on my okay. Tesla account, so uh, at least you'll get a free charge out of it. But I haven't gotten this thing to work yet, but uh, I'd love we'll to see what the electric looks like flowing through that pipe. <laughs> All right, let's see. Open her up. Okay, so I don't want to scratch your car. Oh, I got a PPF on. Just hold that there. So it is gonna, and oops, I hate the ones that automatically snap back. It is gonna reach, but as you can see, it's not ideal because it's gonna drape over the top of the car. Now, we could have pulled up farther. If we were to pull up another foot or so, this would be hanging down, but it's not gonna be draped on the ground. So yes, it reaches, but it's, there's not a lot of extra room with the e-tron because the e-tron does have this long hood. And again, the charge port, is here on the front left quarter panel. A lot of cars have them here. So, okay, it, it's a pass, but uh, you know, you, uh, I would, if this was my car, I'd probably pull up an extra foot so it just draped down. It wasn't, the cable wasn't coming across the top quarter of the hood. You have to put a towel or something under here to yeah. keep it from hitting the car. Yeah, but it will work. That's the question. It does reach. And finally, I've got a Lucid Air because the Lucid Air has a very long hood and the charge port also is on the front left side set way back. So let's see if the five foot extension cable will work on a Lucid Air. If you notice, I'm in the spot. I didn't pull over the white line on the other side of the spot. So this is within the parking spot here. And if the camera's shaking a little bit right now, there's like 25 mile an hour winds here today in New Jersey, it's pretty wild. But let's see if this works. Okay. Now I'm definitely gonna have to drape over the hood for this. Okay, so no, being within the spot, this doesn't reach. My, my, uh, right side wheels will have to be on the white line. So I'm gonna now pull over a little bit, go on the white line and see if it reaches. All right, so I'm still within the spot. My right side tires are on the white line, so I'm not intruding in the other parking spot. And now, yes, it will reach. So if you do have a lucid air with this very long hood, you've got to go all the way over to the right side of the parking spot but it will work being within that parking spot. The guy next to you might not like it because the passenger door might not open up very easily, but you can make it work. 
So I didn't actually get this to work and charge any of the electric vehicles, but to be honest with you, I was expecting that probably wasn't gonna be the case. But we did learn that five feet is enough. You can charge any electric vehicle from within that stool. Now, obviously I didn't test every electric vehicle, but I really think the Lucid Air is the worst case scenario. The Lightning is close to it because of that huge hood and charge port is set back so far. Okay, so you probably noticed that all the vehicles that I tested here have the charge port on the front left fender just in front of the driver's door. Why didn't I test them out on any other location of the vehicle? Because there's EVs with charge ports all over the place, even on the front. Uh, we'll, we'll start off with the front, like let's say an e Nero. That's not gonna have a problem because you pull front into the charging stall and the supercharger cable is gonna reach that without an issue. The left rear is where Tesla has their charge port, so that's not going to be a problem. The left the, or the right rear of the vehicle, well, that would be a problem if you pulled straight in. But if you backed in, now it would be just like the vehicles I tested with the front left would be where the charge port is. And those vehicles have the charge port typically all the way to the back of the vehicle. So it would be closer to the front when they backed in. They're not all like four or five feet behind the front of the vehicle like a Lucid Air is. So they, if, if the vehicles I tested today would reach, they would reach also. And then how about the front right side of the vehicle? That's really the only location where you really don't see charge ports. Uh, I know there's a couple electric vehicles out there that do, like the Porsche Taycan that has charge ports on both sides. But if you did need to DC charge from the front right side of the vehicle, you could just pull straight in and the charge port will be in the correct location like a Tesla backing into the stall. So really it only made sense to test vehicles that had the charge port on the front left fender all the way back towards the driver's door. And that's why I selected those. And I do believe that if the air and the lightning reach, anything else is going to reach. I know some people ask me to test the Mustang Mach-E, and that also has the same type of a long hood situation with the charge port in the back. If the lightning reaches, the Mach-E will reach because the front hood isn't longer than the lightning's is. So um, I think we're covered here. And now let's talk about the length of the cable. It's going to be about five feet long. A to Z says they're on schedule to have this commercially available uh, in June. So I'm only a couple months away from uh, them being able to sell it. They originally told me it was going to cost about $300. That was before the Canadian tariffs went into effect. So we're probably looking at now $350 to $375, somewhere in that price range, uh, because you're going to tack on an extra 25% for the tariff. Now, A to Z hasn't commented on this yet, but they have told me confidentially that we're going to have to have some sort of price increase here. We can't absorb a 25% price increase. Maybe it won't be the full 25%, but you're going to pay extra for it here in the U.S. at least. Um, and that's for the five-foot cable. They haven't ruled out also selling a longer cable. Initially, they did. And uh, when I did the first video, Amin Zatour, the CEO, told me, look, the five-foot cable is going to be long enough. That's what we're going to sell. But since I put out my video, a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, have reached out on X, uh, in the comment stream of my video, in other places, to A to Z to say, please, sell us a longer cable. We'll pay for it. I know it's going to cost extra. Uh, I do towing. This would be better for me for towing. I know I'd be able to park on the side of the superchargers and, and have the extension cable over there. So they haven't ruled it out now. And if you're one of those people that really do want a longer cable, keep the pressure on. Post in the comments here, uh, tweet out on X, hey, you know, A to Z, I'm all in if you make a longer cable. They're not going to make it if there's not going to be demand for it. Uh, but if they think enough people will buy the longer cable, then they'll probably offer it. So uh, if you're one of those people that want it, let them know you want it and maybe you'll get it. All right, well, that's all we have here today on the uh, five foot extension cable. I think we pretty much proved that it will work and uh, A to Z is correct. I think most people are going to want that shorter one. You don't want to pay for 
any more than what you need. If that's going to reach and make it work, you might have to scoot your car all the way up. You might have to go all to the right of that parking stall, but you'll fit in the parking stall and it will reach your car. Well, I hope today's video settled the question of whether or not five feet is going to be long enough. It will be long enough. If this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.